On today's episode, we're going to cover the five biggest types of websites and what you should look for when you're designing them. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome back to the free web design course. Now, while we're always talking in this course about web design as if websites are all one thing, Obviously, there is different types of website and you need to mind and look for different types of things and care about actually different types of aspects when you're designing each of them. So in this video, I want to cover the five biggest ones and what you should think about and let's break it down with examples as always. Hope this is going to be super helpful for you. By the way, like this video, subscribe, hit the bell notification, a lot of awesome videos coming up. So make sure you're with us. Now, let's get started. We're going to get started talking about e-commerce website. Now, you're probably super familiar with e-commerce website because like everybody, you're shopping online. We're all shopping online. But I want to talk about what you should be mindful of if you got a web design project, an e-commerce website, what you should look for, what you should focus on, what are the goals. So obviously, when you're in e-commerce, the, the goal of the website is to sell a product. That means that the focus of a, an e-commerce website is to have you look at the product. So there's basically two things that are really, really important in terms of design. One is how you showcase the product. And that means both kind of the art direction. Is this a photography? How do you shoot the, the the product? Is it on a wide background? Is it when somebody's using it? Is it from all different uh, angles? You, you as a designer need to art direct and think about the whole product showcase experience. So that is one thing that is very unique about e-commerce that you as a designer need to think about. How are you going to present it? How are you going to design the product page to showcase, you know, again, all the different variation of the product, if it has different colors, different sizes, different angles, you need to make sure that you show it in the best light possible. Now, the next thing that you should be designing with care, because the purpose here on this website is to sell this product, you want to make sure that the checkout experience is as well designed. This is really where the money is. So if you design a bad checkout process, you know, your client is going to be losing money. And so you want to make sure that you use the best practices. And we're going to see this in a second in the example to make sure that, you know, as many as uh, people go through this process with trust, they understand that the process is secure, that, you know, they're going to, they can, they can feel safe buying using this website. Um, Let's dive into an example and see this. So here's an, uh, the website of Allbirds. This is a brand selling shoes. This website was designed by Red Antler. Um, and first thing you land on the website, boom, you see shoes on people with a great image. So the focus is the product. You scroll down and what do you see? Shoes, shoes, shoes in all different use cases and scenarios. And they're trying to get you to either shop men or shop women. Now, this is where, you know, you'll see, and you've probably seen this before, categories and product grids. So you want to see all the different products available. This is the product page. And again, here they're trying to show you all different angles, let you choose your size and colors, and then moving on to the checkout. By the way, this is the cart. Every e-commerce website is probably going to have a cart that's run down in the navigation. You can always drop in here. So this is the checkout experience. Now, this website was built on Shopify. So this is a pretty standard Shopify checkout process. And what you'll see here is your this is not a single page checkout. They've broken it down. You can see it on the top to kind of like uh, three steps here. And the reason is they want you to Put your email first because not a lot of people finish the actual checkout process. So they want to make sure that you put your email first, progress, and if you drop on at a later stage before you're putting in your credit card, they're going to target you again. They're going to email you. They're going to show you ads to make sure that you go back and buy this. So breaking down the checkout process into multiple steps allows for this process and it's very, very important because again, this is where the money is. All right, let's move to the next type of website, which is the marketing and business website. This is the most popular kind of website. Why? Because obviously every business in the world, which there are millions and millions of, all of them needs a, a website. Now, where not all businesses around the world are selling their services and products online like e-commerce, the purpose of this is 
to still show who they are, right? Because even if you have an off offline business, people are going to Google you, whether they want to know who you are, what's your story, how you're different, or they're just looking for the checkout not check out contact information to reach out to you, um, they're going to do their due diligence by Googling you. And so every business in the world has to have a marketing or a business website to tell their own story. So here are the design challenges when you have this kind of website, which again, this is the most popular type of website out there. So you want to make sure that first, there's a very clear description and value proposition and uh, presentation of the benefits of you know who they are, what they do, why would you use them, how are they different, right? So this is this has to be very very clear. And even though I'm putting this as a design challenge because how you present this is a design challenge, a lot of this is how you write this. So copywriting is very very important here, right? Less so, a little bit less so maybe with e-commerce where you can visually see the product, but here this is about storytelling, right? So the next thing here is the story you want to tell a different story this is even if they just came here to see who they are or find your your phone number you have a, an opportunity now to tell a story that would set you apart that would create some kind of an emotional um, connection with your potential customer create trust and so you want to use this opportunity to design a story for them now the one more thing to create um, credibility is using social proof and social proof means showing that other people have worked with you in the past because we as people we have a bias we think that if other people have already worked with you and done this thing in the past it's probably more safe and secure right so if you show other people i have worked with these clients this is what my other clients are saying to me this is using the psychology of social proof to make people believe that you are credible and more trustworthy and they're more likely to do business with you all right the last thing is even if you are not selling things online you still want to get people or use the opportunity of people visiting in your website to some kind of a call to action and call to action is basically us as designers telling them what to do and that can be contact us it could also be join our newsletter or download our freebie or something like this but we can use the opportunity of people visiting our website to create some kind of a relationship or take the relationship with them to the next step and we do this by using a call to action Let's check out this example. So this is a website of a Pilates studio. This was designed by Arden Web. And you can see here, first of all, it was very clear, this is Pilates. So you can understand this by, by reading the headline or looking at you know, the visuals, which are very, very clear. And note that the focus here is about storytelling. And we're here for 35 years. This is the social proof we talked about. So even though they're not selling anything here, the, the call to action is to book a session. It's not a huge, that's probably not the main purpose of the website to get people to book a session, but they're, they're using it. Um, and you can see that most of it is by building credibility by showing their teachers, their, their methods, and their clients. So this is mainly a website that is about building trust and showcasing their story and yeah, basically showcasing their quality by using good quality design. They're not actually care if you book a session here or it's not optimized to sell it's optimized to create trust using design all right let's move on into the next type of website and that is blogs and media outlets so we all as people are we are most likely today to consume our information through the internet, right? We do maybe watch TV still, but still news and general media outlet, magazines, that kind of stuff have are, are now super, super popular and that's where we get most of our information. So whether these are big, you know, New York Times, big media outlet, or some people who are just blogging and creating content, the, the way to design a specific media outlet, whether it's big or small, that you still have to focus on the same things. And the things are first content, right? These types of website, the purpose of them, their goal is to get you to read something, okay? Read the actual content. So the design of the actual article page is going to be the main design challenge when you're designing these websites. The other thing is, you know, just reading text is boring. You'll probably want to use some kind of an imagery 
whether it is inside of the post or as kind of a hero to trigger people to get them to be curious enough to click and tease them into your article. But you'll have to work out some imagery system here. And the other thing, as you grow, as you know, a media outlet becomes bigger than just a single person writing a blog, understanding what type of content you have on your website, the categories, showcasing them and using tags or categories to organize information and how you communicate that to uh, the, the visitors is going to become very, very important. So let's dive into an example. So this is the website of Think Global Help. This was designed by Area 17. And you can see here, first of all, all the categories are exposed at the top. And you can even see where the, the, the goal here is to showcase a lot of things, right? And you can see the categories here and they, they just wanna tease you into the articles. Now here's the article page. Now note here that the focus is on what's going on in the middle, right? The focus here and as you scroll along, you see everything is becoming clean. There's nothing here but actually reading the text, they'll break it down with an image sometimes, but the main, main focus here is how do you get people to read the text? The type is big, not too long of lines, so they'll be super, super readable. They'll sometimes break it down with some quotes to get people, because people are scheming these days, so they wanna grab their attention um, to specific areas of the article and get them to read. Of course, um, note the sharing buttons at the top because how do uh, these uh, media outlets you know, get more traffic is by having their um, posts or articles shared and going viral. So this is something that you'll need to focus on, how you drive traffic from the articles that you currently have, usually by these social sharing buttons. All right, the next type of website, this is not super popular, but it is one of the important ones today, is educational content, right? We learn today a lot on the internet. Um, some, some of you are doing this on YouTube. There are uh, also places for online courses, and there are specific websites that are dedicated to teach people. So whether it is online courses using videos or using text or using all kinds of different um, medium format, getting people to consume your content and actually teaching people online is a different task, uh, different challenge, design challenge, right? So what are the design challenge when it comes to an educational website? Well, first of all, you wanna get people engaged. The problem with most kind of online courses and teaches is that people are very excited at the beginning. They might say, oh, I wanna learn this thing, but then they're like, ah, oh, you know what, I'm bored, I'm gonna go do something else because people's attention spans are becoming very, very short. So one of your challenges if you're designing an educational um, website is how do I keep people engaged? What can I do to surprise them? What can I do to do something new to make this more entertaining or really cool to keep get people excited to keep on consuming the education content because you at the end of the day you want to make sure that they've actually consumed this content um, so that they know the thing that you want to teach them the next thing is as you're trying to teach maybe a big subject you want to make sure that there's orientation as to hey what do we have here right where are you in terms of the course or the learning process can you jump into the next chapter how long there is more to to learn you want to make sure that people are understanding this so let's check out this example of, um, this is an online course by a nonprofit. This is called Visions for the Future. And it's basically a free kind of course. And basically there's an intro here and then you basically see the index of all the chapters in this online course. This is mainly focused on, uh, on text, but no, they have here kind of a very cool interaction of the timeline of the internet. So that's really fun to kind of interact with um, versus just reading. But then you move into the next chapter Chapter. And this is, as I said, this is mainly text-based learning, but they're breaking it down with interviews, videos, and different types of uh, content type to get you to keep get you to keep engaging and learning and consuming all the content, right? And you always have this kind of an index thing um, here on the right, so you can always see where you are, how much do you have left, and if you want to navigate to a different chapter. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is the portfolio or a personal website. This is basically kind of a subset of the business website, you can say, but this is for, for 
people versus companies where they basically want to showcase their work, okay? Whether it is they're looking for their next work or looking for client work, you have your own website to present basically who you are and what you know how to do. And this is super useful for us as designers, but a lot of other uh, creatives and, and generally people have personal website where they show what they have done previously in the past. Now, in terms of design challenges, the first thing is you, you'll need to art direct your work. You can't to just paste your work out there so you need to find a way to visually present this in a in a meaningful way now if you're a designer your work might be visual but if, let's say if you're a developer or if you're you know a writer you need to find a way to present your work in a visual way because at the end of the day we're consuming the content visually and so you want that to be um, visually appealing the next thing is this is a personal website. So whether we are, again, trying to find work or trying to get clients to hire us, at the end of the day, they're hiring us as people. And so in our personal website, what we want to show is our personality, who we are as people. And that's very, very important. It's not just the work. It's who created the work. Why would I work with you? How are you different? Are you are you funny? Are you upbeat? Are you, you know, we, we want to understand who you are. And then also kind of like uh, most business website, you might have a call to action depending on if you want to close a deal, if you want to get hired, depending on what you're trying to achieve here, you'll probably have a call to action. Now, I want to show you this really awesome website from Xenia Rin Suk. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but she's an amazing designer. And you can see, even just by hovering, uh, you, you can see different types of work. So immediately before even scrolling, you can see the type of work she's doing and personality, and you can see her even though you can't see her face. Now she's using a video to show, even though most of her design is kind of static, and I don't know if you can hear the music, but this is really, really cool way to very quickly show personality. And the personality goes through, you know, the, the design, but also the sound, also the, you know, the, the editing of this. So obviously she's so showing her work in a very visual and art directed way, everything that she can do. And she finishes up with the call to action to let's make something great together and her email. So this is a really, really great example of a personal website showing both personality and work, ending up with a call to action. Really, really fantastic example. All right, so these were the five most popular use cases. I hope you find them um, helpful. Let me know what kind of website you're working on right now. Of course, again, subscribe, hit the bell notification, like this video, all that kind of stuff because I'm looking forward to seeing you here on the next video. Ciao, bye-bye.